Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Uh, we certainly do give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, as the scripture says. He is good and his mercy endureth forever. Amen. And as we often say, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. The Bible says, enter in his gates with thanksgiving and enter in his courts with praise. Amen. So it's good to praise God and to give him thanks. So right now, we certainly do want to go before the Lord in prayer. Uh, we want to remember all bereaved families. Remember men and women and children everywhere that the Lord will continue to save and add to the church daily such as should be saved. And even in these times, I was in a conversation with a couple guys. It wasn't a real conversation, but they were just making comments and I was around. And, um, and I made a couple comments. Um, they were talking about the end times and taking the mark of the beast. I was surprised uh, that uh, they would, were talking about such. And um, I told them, well, that's true. And uh, we know that this is the end times and uh, you don't want to take that mark. And one guy was like, well, Frank, I ain't going to take that mark. And uh, the thought entered into my mind now is, you know, well, uh, what really matters is are you saved? Are you ready? You know, not just not taking the mark. It's about uh, receiving Jesus, getting baptized in his name, and being filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost and ready when he comes. Amen. Amen. So we want to uh, pray for the world, pray for people. Uh, certainly, uh, the times that we're living in, we ought to be thinking about getting saved. Amen. Amen. And, and if you are saved, you ought to be thinking about staying saved. <laughs> Because you can see by the signs of the time, Jesus is soon to come. Uh, do we have any other prayer requests? Yes. That we grow in the Lord and in the power of his might. Amen. That we'll uh, continue to do that which is right in the sight of the Lord. And keep our hearts and our minds uh, stayed on him. As the Bible says, he'll keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on him. So, uh, we want to ask the church to stand. And let every heart pray. Oh, gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we certainly do thank you, Lord, for your grace, your mercy, your love, and your kindness. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to come together one more time to be in your presence. Lord, we know that in your presence is fullness of joy. And Lord, we ask you, Lord, that you look upon each and every one of us uh, that are here on tonight, that are listening, even on the Facebook Live. We ask you, Lord, that you send forth your word on tonight and encourage our hearts and strengthen us. Grant the door utterance in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we want to be pleasing in your sight. So we ask you, Lord, that you reveal truth, reveal knowledge and wisdom and understanding. And help us, Lord, with the ability to even to know how to apply your word and Holy Ghost, we ask you, Lord, to teach us. Teach us, Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you glory and honor and praise. Bless all of the Reed families. Bless each and every prayer request. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. 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 It's good to be here, uh, back out in the house of the Lord. Uh, God knows I, I truly uh, I get excited about Bible study and uh, Glad uh, to be here in your midst. Last week I wasn't here. Um, I was dealing with the, the wife, and um, but I'm glad to be here on today. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. And uh, as the scripture says, we enter and into his gates with thanksgiving, and we certainly do come into his courts with praise. So uh, I want to uh, finish up the book of Ephesians, uh, Ephesians chapter number 6. Amen. Ephesians chapter number 6. Praise ye the Lord. Praise <laughs> yes, Ephesians chapter number 6. And, pardon me? Oh, yes, yes, yes. And, and 
that actually begins, that thought that Paul is bringing out, it actually begins in the latter part of that fifth chapter. And what he's focused on uh, is relationship. And what, what, what God wants us to know, that holiness and salvation is really relationship. The reason why he gives us the Holy Ghost, in which the Holy Ghost produces uh, the fruit of the Spirit, when I say the reason, there's multiple reasons why the Holy Ghost we have. <laughs> Holy Ghost is multi-purpose. But uh, one of the reasons why we have the Holy Ghost is because the Holy Ghost produces within us that divine nature, the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness, goodness and the such like. Uh, and that's to help us to have a good relationship first and foremost with the Father and the Son and, and to have a good relationship with one another, our brothers and our sisters, and a good relationship with all others. And um, uh, the Bible says that we ought to follow peace with all men and holiness without the which no man shall see the Lord. Mm -hmm. So if, if, if you call yourself, I don't want to say it like that, but if you are walking in holiness, that means that you strive to have good relationships with everybody, including your enemies. And, and as much as we said, as lies in you, you live peaceably with all men. So Paul, in these, um, it's a, it's a bad commentary um, that uh, your only friend is your mother. <laughs> you know, that, if that's your only friend, if that's your only friend, that's your only support is your mother, then something wrong. And there's something wrong as well if uh, you always arguing and fighting with everybody, uh -huh. that you don't get along with nobody. That's a strong indication that you got a problem. You know, and uh, uh, it's also uh, good not only to recognize that you got a problem, but to do something about it. Amen. Walk in the spirit. Uh, walk in the spirit. And um, utilize the fruits of the spirit to get along with others. So that's what Paul was saying in that bottom of that fifth chapter. He was telling the wives uh, to submit yourselves to your own husbands. I was telling the husbands to love the wives. And in chapter Ephesians 6 and 1, now he's dealing with the children. Uh, and he's dealing with relationship. Now, when I say I can't stress it enough, uh, it's imperative that we have good relationships uh, according to the scriptures. Live according to the scriptures and have relationships based on the scriptures. Live according to the scriptures and have relationships uh, based on the scriptures. It's very important. That's the reason, one of the reasons why he gives us the Holy Ghost. Amen. So he says, children, first Ephesians 1, 6 and 1, it says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. So he's, now he's already dealt with the, the, uh, the wives and the husbands. Now he's dealing with the family unit. Uh, which left is the children. Now the children uh, ought to submit to the law of the Lord that the parents are, are, are utilizing, that the parents are putting down. Um, because the scripture says this is right. It's right. It's morally right. It's, it's, it's godly right. God, God gives us his Ten Commandments for us to follow so that we can live a right life. Amen. Now notice what he said. Children, obey your parents. You know, the parents are the ones that are over the children. And um, to keep the household going, the, ch the parents should know more than the children. They, 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 they're, they're, not, they're not your friends. Your, your children ain't your friends. They, they're your children. <laughs> You know, and you should know more than them. And, uh, and, and the, you knowing more than them, you should lead them 
and bring them up in the way of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So the Bible says, uh, teach them the God's way, and when they get older, they shouldn't depart. Amen. They, they, they have a grasp of what is right. Amen. Notice that uh, verse number two, he says, honor, uh, telling the children, honor thy father and your mother. Honor. That means to respect. Uh, give heed to uh, their advice. Don't look down on them. Uh, be, uh, give them uh, the parent, the children ought to, um, I'm going to say it like this, reverence their parents. Amen. You know, respect their parents. Amen. Now, even the parents uh, are human. They ain't going to have everything together all the time. They may make some mistakes. Amen. But, you know, uh, that's being human. But, uh, in essence, God says, honor uh, thy father and thy mother. Notice, he said, which is the first commandment with promise. And that's that, honor your mother and your father, uh, uh, which is that first commandment with promise, so that you can, uh, verse number three, that ye shall uh, live a long life upon this earth. I know some people, uh, I have it in my mind, one, one individual, I believe, this is my belief, that he died an early death because he didn't really respect his mom. You know, people die early when you don't respect your mother and your father. Amen. You know, uh, and, and not that the mother killed him, but, you know, that was the judgment, you know, of the Lord. Amen. So you got to honor your mother and your father. Amen? Isn't that, isn't that also um, not to do anything, even if you're not with them, not to do anything to bring shame upon them? To yes. You know, yes. So much directly, indirectly as well. Hey Amen. You teaching and preaching. Yes, because um, if you read the whole book of uh, Proverbs, it tells you don't bring shame. Uh, tells the children don't bring shame upon your parents. Uh, don't bring shame upon your mother and your father. You know, and and that's totally true. You know, uh, what the children do is a reflection of the family, yes. and and it can have repercussions. <laughs> So, yes, directly and indirectly. Good point, Dick. Uh, notice then, uh, verse uh, number five. I just want to move on kind of quickly because I want to hit on that whole armor of God. <laughs> hey. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. So he says, verse number five, it says, servants. Now, he's done talking about the children. Now he's talking about the relationship that we ought to have as workers, uh, as workers. As workers, it says servants, be obedient to them uh, that are your masters. So, so submit yourself to your supervisors, those that have the rule over thee. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Those that 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 you labor, uh, that you said, okay, I'll work with you or work for you for such and such, and that means that you will do the work, and that also includes all other assigned duties, <laughs> not just what's on your. Uh, uh, job description, but whatever is needed and necessary. And God wants you to work not grumbling, not mumbling. Yeah, uh, uh, and it says it's going to tell us we got to work as unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let let not work as unto the Lord because oftentimes we may have some bosses that ain't fair. You know, that don't treat you right. But that's not uh, uh, the, the the thing to to quit, throw in the towel, give up. You know, work as unto the Lord. Amen. No, no, put put him first. Amen. And say, I'm, I'm on this job. I'm going to do a good job because God has me here. Amen. God wants me here for a reason. Uh, you got to rationalize it in that way and 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 look at uh, uh, if your boss ain't treating you right, look at, well, I'm going to do what's good and I'm going to pray for him that God win him over. You know what I'm saying? That's because, you know, when we look at it that way, God puts us in these situations because he knows that we can handle it. He puts us in these situations so we can be the light. Amen? Uh, the Bible tells us, you know, uh, talks about love. You know, if, if, if I only love my, the ones that love me, uh, what, what is that? You know, I got to love them that don't love me. Huh? And, and do good to them that hate me and to despitefully use me. I got to allow the light to shine. How, how God, there's, there's some hard people out there that God wants you to influence. Yeah. 
amen, to bring to him, to, 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 to uh, be, the scripture tells us that we're surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Uh, he, you got to be a witness around evil folk, you know. Notice what Jesus told the beloved apostle Paul. He said, I'm, I'm going to deliver you from the people to whom now I send you back. Uh, uh, God delivers us. He delivers us from the world, but he sends us back into the world so that we can be lights. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. It's good to uh, uh, allow your light to shine among us. You ain't going to shine too bright because you already, you are already among lights. But when you go to dark places, you should be beaming. Amen? A beacon of light. Uh, the people should, when you walk in, people should know you there. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and, and that's the way God wants us to be. Wants us to work diligent. Amen. Be faithful. Be committed. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, Mother Louise. I'm just going to ask you, did you intentionally skip number four? Oh, Jesus. No, I didn't. My bad. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I was in a hurry. You forgive me. <laughs> All right. Now, number four, it says, and ye fathers... Uh, provoke not your children to wrath. Mm. And <laughs> that means, yeah, that's good. That's good. Uh, because fathers is normally uh, the disciplinarians uh, in the family. And um, but that's not always the case, but it, it's, it's true. So, so, you know, this can be broad fathers and mothers. Uh, don't provoke your children to wrath. Don't, don't be hard on them. Uh, don't provoke them to wrath, to be angry, to be upset. Amen. To, to you, 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 they, you, uh, uh, one way you can provoke them to wrath, they uh, doing bad, you make them read the Bible. You know, the Bible ain't meant to be read like that as a form of punishment. Uh, no, no, no. Then what would happen indirectly, they'd get upset with God. Uh, uh, so you don't want to do that. Don't provoke your children to wrath, but notice what he says. Bring them up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. Meaning, meaning you got to lose a twofold. Uh, bring them up, you nurture them, be kind to them. Uh, if they've done something wrong, you tell them first, this is going to hurt you more than it's going to hurt me. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? And then you lower the boom. You know, uh, ad admonish them, correct them. Uh, you uh, Parents are are, 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 if you don't correct your children, you are neglecting them. Uh, so that's another form of neglect. Don't allow your children to do every and anything. Uh, correct them. Admonish them. Bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Um, Alright? Um, let's go back then. Ephesians chapter number 6 and uh, verse number 6. All right, we talked about servants, how the servants are to, uh, this is verse number five. Servants, uh, be obedient to them that are what? Your masters. Your masters, meaning your supervisors, your directors, those that, yes, the management, those that are over you according to the flesh. Amen, according to the flesh. No, notice how you ought to be with fear and trembling. That fear there is reverence. Amen. Reverence and urgency. You know, what, what they tell you, they ask you to do something, reverence what they're telling you to do, but don't get it done uh, 20 days later. You know, get it done. You know, get it done in a timely and reasonable fashion. Notice what he says, in singleness of heart uh, as unto Christ. Uh, meaning that, that singleness of heart, meaning that you want to uh, uh, um, apply godly principles. Uh, when it says, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, um, you got to have that singleness of mind that I'm going to be godly and holy everywhere I go. Huh? If I'm on the job, I'm going to be the same. If I'm at church, I'm going to be the same. If I'm in the house, I'm going to be the same. You see me in the community, I'm going to be the same. And I'm going to be one-minded with Christ. Amen? Hey, I'm not, I'm not going to be a hypocrite. I'm not going to be a pretender. I'm going to be one-minded with the Lord. Amen? I have a question. Um, 
I think this is a, uh, one of the verses that slave owners used to use to control their slaves. Absolutely. And, and keep them in bondage. Mm -hmm. And that word obedient, they, they, you know, women don't like that word no more. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, <laughs> it's, it, it, it's, it, you can use your position in a way that's not fair. That's true, people can, but you got to be obedient to your boss. You got to obey what your, what your boss says do um, as long as it doesn't interfere with the scriptures uh, uh, concerning the truth, yeah. the, the word of God. If they've they given you an assignment, uh, you got to obey the assignment. Go ahead and do it. Amen. And if you don't want to obey the assignment, then you got to move on. <laughs> Uh, and that don't mean you buck up against, uh, uh, you know, you get some people, they've been doing it this way for 20 years, and then you come on the job, and they say, well, you know, uh, you know, I think this way would be better. Uh, and, you know, it's good to bring up new, fresh ideas, don't get me wrong. But, but, but if they say, no, no, we're going to continue to do it our way, uh, that don't mean you in implement your way. <laughs> you follow me? Yeah. You continue to do it uh, the way it was done according to how your boss wants it done. Yeah. Amen? Thank you, Lord. All right? Now, uh, but, but you're right. Uh, uh, that's why I use the word servants because generally speaking, they had slaves. All right? So notice, uh, verse number six. This is not with eye service. That eye service means you don't just get busy when you see the boss coming. <laughs> you, you start sweeping the floor when you hear the footsteps. <laughs> see, yeah, yeah. You start, start crumpling up the paper when you see them coming. <laughs> now with eye service, notice, as man pleasers. Uh, you don't want to uh, be a man pleaser. Uh, you, want, you don't want to be a brown noser. You know, you just want to get the job done. Honest day's work for honest day's pay. Amen? And, and notice, you got to do it as unto the Lord. Amen. Work as unto the Lord. Huh? Giving God all the glory and the honor. Because if you did it like that, it doesn't matter um, um, uh, how, what job you may do, how uh, uh, unfairly you may feel like you're being treated, uh, you'll still do the right thing. And that's what God wants. God is concerned about you doing the right thing under all types of pressure. Amen? And God doesn't want to see you lose your cool, lose your temper, uh, because you don't know God may have an assignment, want you to uh, reach that individual in love. You know, win them. Bring them to the body of Christ. Uh, we always got to look at ourselves as agents. Uh, agents of the Lord. Uh, no matter what we are. If you're in school, you got to look at yourself as you're on an assignment. It's a purpose to my life, and I'm here for a reason. Huh? Not just, I'm just here marking time. I'm, I'm here to redeem the time. I'm here to live something. I'm here to deposit something. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. All right. Where we at? Six. All right. Six. It says, uh, servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh uh, with fear and trembleness and singleness of heart unto Christ. Verse number 6, it says, Not with thy servants as man pleasers, but as the servants of who? Christ. Amen. That's what you want to be, a servant of Christ. Hallelujah. And doing the will of God from where? The heart. The heart. The heart. Not, not, not just murmuring and complaining and, and, and doing what, 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 what the boss says, you got to do it with a cheerful heart. Uh, you can't just, the boss say, well, I want you to go over there and pick up that trash. Well, I always got to pick up the trash. And you murmur and complain all the way, picking up the trash until you get done. You done lost your reward. You done lost your victory. God ain't pleased with that. Amen? Angle, you got to do it with a cheerful heart. Uh, do it with a sincere spirit. Huh? Y'all with me? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Now, notice. Notice. Uh, he said, doing the will of God from the heart. That's why you got to work as unto the Lord. Because it's God's will. Amen? 
And, 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 if, and if it's God's will, I want to do my very best. I want to be my very best. All right? That's how, because you got to remember that what he's talking about here and those, those, these verses that we're going over is relationship. Is relationship. If you want to have a good relationship with your boss, then you do what your boss asks you to do. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. You follow me? Mm -hmm. People who get fired often and have 20, 30 jobs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know people like that. Mm -hmm. uh, multiple jobs. You ask them to fill out a job resume, they say, where do you want me to start? Yeah. <laughs> uh, because they got some issues. Yeah. Uh, and if, and if, they, if they work as unto the Lord, they, they won't have those kind of issues on the job. Yeah, that's true. Uh, well, they won't have those kind of, they'll beg you to stay. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. And, and, and notice, uh, he says, then uh, uh, if, we, if we work as unto the Lord and have that singleness of heart, then we'll be able to win people over to him. Uh, you are an ambassador unto the Lord. You are a royal priesthood, a chosen uh, generation, a holy nation. Amen. Amen? Uh, you represent the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Never forget that. Uh, uh, in word and deed, never forget that. Amen. Amen. I know. I know. Uh, uh, I've had uh, uh, some supervisors that that uh, I particularly didn't care for, mm -hmm. and they didn't particularly care for me, okay. and and did some things to me that 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 were unjust and unfair. But somebody say, but God. But God. Huh? When, when, I, when I found out in the scriptures that you got to work as unto the Lord, that changed the whole atmosphere. Thank you. Huh? Changed my whole, my whole, my whole outlook. Amen. So I started working as unto the Lord, not for the particular company, uh -huh. huh? but for the Lord, things started to change. Amen. God was able to touch the people's mind. Because one supervisor, she cost me a whole year of, of, of uh, we call it, uh, when you get your wages, you get the pay increase. We had one so long, I forgot what it was. <laughs> there you go. Uh, a pay increase cost me a whole year, bro, day. Huh? And I'm mad, gave me a bad review. Huh? And, 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 and instead of trying to get even, I sought the Lord. Huh? And, within, and within that year, they gave me not one, but two pay increases. Thank you, Lord. And ain't God good? Yes, he is. He'll turn it around. He'll turn it around. Thank you, Lord. And then had the supervisor come back to tell me, Frank, I'm sorry. Yeah. Huh? I'm sorry. See, he'll make your enemy your footstool. You follow me? This thing works. Huh? If, if you allow God to fight your battle, this thing works. Amen. If you allow God to be your master, your paymaster, this thing works. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God is a good God. Yes. God is a good God. God is a good God. Yes. Thank you, Lord. All right. What verse are we in? Seven. Verse seven. Uh, notice what he says. Uh, with good, with good will, doing service. Now, notice you got to have good will. That good will is your attitude. Your attitude. Your attitude determines your altitude. You can't be uh, uh, doing the chicken neck every time they tell you to do something. You know? And turning up your nose. And, 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 and doing it in a grumpy, nasty way. You got to be have a good, good attitude. Amen? Motivated. Be motivated. Amen? With goodwill, uh, doing service as unto who? The Lord and not under men. That's key. Uh, everything that you do, you do in word and deed, you do it unto the what? To the Lord. Amen? Thank you, Lord. That's key. Now notice, verse number six. Knowing that whatsoever good thing that a man, that any man doeth, the shame shall he receive what? Of the Lord. The Lord sees your good works. <laughs> Amen? And he rewards you of your good works. He sees it. Huh? Now notice, any good thing that you do is going to be a reward. Yeah. Any bad thing is going to be a what? Punishment. Uh, and a punishment. Yeah. 
<laughs> you follow me? Huh? I don't want to be punished. I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to receive good things. Uh, the same shall receive of the Lord. Uh, whether he be bond or free, meaning that, because originally this is written for slaves, um, and that bond means slaves, uh -huh. and then whether or not you be free, a non-slave. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, verse number six, and ye, and ye masters, now notice, it's all about relationship. All about relationship. So he talked about the worker. Now he's talking about the supervisors, the managers. If any of you are here that are supervisors or managers, he says, uh, uh, do the same thing unto them. Do unto others as you would what? Have them do unto you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. For bearing, uh, threatening. Now, don't threaten your workers. Mm -hmm. uh, now, if you don't do this, I'm going to beat you up. Uh, don't do that. Don't do that. Now, you can, uh, uh, is, let me ask you this question. It's open, my, it's open question here. Is saying, if you don't do this, I'm going to fire you? Is that threatening? Yes. No. That's the truth. <laughs> if you ain't going to work, uh, if you ain't going to work, I'm going to get rid of you. <laughs> Amen. I mean, I mean, that ain't threatening. That's, that's, that's the truth. That's the ability of being lazy. Of being lazy. She said lazy. I like that. Thank you, Lord. Your ability. They can't help have you do something that you don't have the ability to do. You know, well, if you, don't, if, if you don't have the ability to do it, then they have to reposition you or or move you along. You know, so your service is no longer, no longer needed and give you unemployment. You know, so, so you know, you got to keep up with the times. Because some people say, well, I wasn't raised with no computer now. Uh, y'all know when y'all hired me. Uh, Y'all didn't have no computers. I'm just saying, yeah. you know. But that don't mean you don't learn. Amen. Yeah. That don't mean you, you that, that 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 excuse can only go so far, you know. And they, they they have the responsibility to put you in some training classes, and you have the responsibility to do what? Learn. To learn. Yeah. Amen. For how long it takes. <laughs> but don't be ever learning and never come to the knowledge of the truth. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. But yes, yes. So, so that's not a threat. A threat would mean be, be uh, causing you bodily harm, mm -hmm. or 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 saying uh, if you don't do this, then I'm going to scandalize your name. Mm -hmm. You know, stuff like that. I, I'm going to get rid of your 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 your, your family member work with the firm all down, so they threaten to get rid of them if you don't do your job. Mm -hmm. That's threat. You know, so you can't threaten people. No. Amen. Don't can't be threatening people. All right. Now, um, what does it say? Uh, what verse we in? Nine. Nine. He says, and ye masters do the same thing unto them for bearing threatening. Don't be threatening people. Knowing that your master also is in heaven. All right, so now you got to realize that you got you got a master over you. Right. Uh, God is over you, right. uh, and He's in heaven watching everything you do. Thank you, Lord. Uh, and that's why you got to work as unto the Lord, because He's watching everything. You got to realize that you're never alone. How many of you believe you're ever alone? <laughs> and you believe you're not alone? I'm not alone. Amen. Never alone. Right. Never. He sees you. He's everything. Everything. Amen. Deacon Fields? Uh, he's talking to the masters, and he's talking to the masters for bearing threatening. Uh -huh. I'm thinking that he's telling these masters, when you're working, he said, look, I had enough of you. <laughs> right. You better stop this. I, I, you know, I'll go side your head. They, right. They should overlook that because they need to forbear. Because no, he talking about, he telling them, he telling the masters, don't do that. He ain't telling the people to overlook that. <laughs> he telling them don't don't do that. Yeah, right. yeah, don't don't be like Pharaoh. Right. Take away, threaten to take away the straw, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and and so they can't make no bricks, and then expect them to make the bricks. Right. You know that's threatening. So so he said don't don't do that. And he masters do the same thing unto them. You know, and the same thing under them 
is meaning, you know, uh, what he's saying in those upper verses regarding servants. Uh, notice, knowing that your master also in heaven, uh, neither is there respect of persons with him. That's right. So if, if you be bad, uh, you're going to get some punishment. Mm -hmm. If you do well, you're going to get a reward. Amen. Amen. God has no respect of a person. He treats everybody alike. Mm -hmm. And he wants us, as if you are a, a supervisor, uh, to treat everybody alike. Amen. Amen. Don't treat people one way and treat another person another way. Mm -hmm. Treat people the same. Amen? Amen. All right, beautiful. And, and, and the reason why Paul is into that is because he's talking about relationships. Relationships is holiness. And, and when the Lord revealed that to me, it was like a, a, a bombshell that hit me. That, that anybody that's going to live godly in Christ Jesus must have good relationships. I mean, even with your enemies. And he harps on that. You know, tell you to love your enemies. Do good to them that hate you and despitefully use you. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord. you got to have a good relationship with them. And that scripture where it talks about where Jesus is teaching in, in the book of Matthew, and it's talking about um, uh, telling the people, uh, uh, if, uh, if, if somebody asks of you something, uh, to give it to them, don't withhold it. He's literally talking about your enemy. Uh, if your enemy asks you something, uh, if your enemy is asking you for something to help them, uh, don't withhold it from them. He's not talking about a stranger. A stranger uh, asked me for, hey, brother, you got a dollar? You got a dollar? I ain't, I ain't, I'm not obligated to give a, a stranger a dollar. Uh, I ain't mean, obligated to give him nothing. You follow me? See, we, got, we had gotten that uh, scripture out of context. But what that scripture is talking about now, uh, Deacon Fields and I are enemies. We fight it, right? And uh, I'm right and he's wrong. <laughs> but now, now, he asked me for something. Right? I'm obligated to help him. That's what that scripture is saying. If it's within my will and if it's within my power, I don't, I don't, because we're arguing and fighting, turn my nose up against him. Huh? And, and not help or aid and assist him. I got scripture. He said, if your enemy hunger, do what? Huh? If he's thirsty, do what? Saying, that's, that's what he's talking about. That's what he's talking about. Thank you, Lord. And, and oftentimes, let me just get this one quick point out. Oftentimes, see, we got to stop being immature uh, in, our, in our relationships and in our thinking and dealing with others and one another. When it says forbear one another in love, that means put up with their foolishness. Put up with their mess. You know what I'm saying? Don't be, don't be a baby. Huh? Always think soberly in it. Somebody, always be the adult in the room. <laughs> All right, let me hit my sister here. Did I hit you, Brother Dave? I just wanted to add something to that. Uh huh. Um, yeah, Hello. You know, the scripture says, yet, yet while we were sinners, uh -huh. he died for us. Yes. So he could have looked at that and said, you know, I'm not going to die for the world. Right. You know what I'm saying? Y'all were sinners, but I took your sins upon me. Yes. To the cross. Yes. So, the master is looking at what we do. Right. You know, what we, what if we treat the person good or bad, he still is going to look at us, and we're going to be judged for that. Absolutely beautiful il illustration, brother Dave. You know something? You said being obligated to our enemy. It just took me back to uh, verse five, and it says, singleness, singleness of your heart, <laughs> doing the will of God in your heart." Yeah. You got to be committed to. It. Yeah. Ain't that beautiful? Thank you, Lord. That's it. Wow. Wow. See, now I'm scratching my head. This is, this is good stuff. Doing the will of God from the heart. Because then he did that. He looked beyond all of our what? And we seen he saw our what? You got to look beyond all the faults of your enemies uh, and see their needs. Because Jesus, he is committed to the cross. Absolutely committed. My God. Man, my chest is about to stick out here. That committed. You know I did some foolish stuff, but yet he still loved me. That's right. I know you did some foolish stuff. Huh? We were all enemies. 
Huh? The Bible tells us that we were all enemies. Amen. But yet, Christ died for the ungodly. Yes, he did. Huh? Thank you, Lord. Our God. So, so, so help, 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 help those that, that got an issue with you. You know, so what? Huh? You got an opportunity to do good? Do what? Do good. Amen. Thank you, Lord. My God. Uh, Deacon Fields? I'll say that there's things in us that we don't know or we think we got the victory over. Yeah. These tests that God allows to come to us through yeah. people or whatever, it is that you know, I had some, I said, Jesus, whoa. You know, I was getting thoughts. I said, where did you, I said, I thought I got over these. But, you know, Peter, if the heat gets turned up enough, it's going to be real. You'll find out that we just is no good as the rest of us. Absolutely. It's <laughs> just by the I, I, Absolutely. <laughs> you know, I, he, he, he bring up another good point. As I was teaching this to you, the thought was going to my mind. Wait till one of your enemies come and see if you won't perform these scriptures. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's a whole other thing. You got to be intentional. Uh, your mind got to be made up before you get there. Uh, what you going to do? Sid? I just want to answer that. If God allowed these things, it's to try us. Yes. You know, and it's also the let us know where we stand. Yes. The things that we need to work on. And all it's the time of your, your patience. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But God want to see how you're going to perform in the midst of that trial. Right. You, you, you know? So Absolutely. That's how you know if you grew a little. Right. Or you know what I'm saying? If you stand in. Right. Or whatever you need some things to work on. Absolutely. My God. You know, my thing is, how do you deal with an enemy as yourself? <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's good, man. I'll tell you, brother. Well, thank you, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. yeah. And we often are. Yeah. Uh, uh, we oppose ourselves. Yeah. So the Bible says, humble yourself beneath the mighty hand of God so he can exalt you. Amen. Amen. The greatest fight you're going to ever fight is with yourself. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. Right. yeah. That's the truth. Hallelujah. <laughs> thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. All right, this is good. Yes, it is. This is good. So he said, he said, masters, and ye masters, do the same unto them for bearing threatening, knowing that your master also is in heaven. Amen. Neither is there respect the person with him. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Now, uh, Paul shifts now. He shifts now uh, from talking about relationship. Are, are we clear that the greatest, uh, uh, I'm going to say it this way, Lord, help me here, Holy Ghost. The, the greatest uh, indicator of your holiness, mm -hmm. of you walking with the Lord, is, is, is how well your relationships are. Huh? You got to have, he gave you the Holy Ghost so that you can have good relationships. If you only got one friend, that's a problem. Amen. That's a problem. Uh, I'm talking about uh, one good friend. <laughs> That's a problem. You, I ain't saying you should go out and get you multiple of friends. Let me let me rephrase what I'm trying to say. All right. If if you only if you can only get along with one person, that's what I'm trying to say. That's a problem. Uh, uh, if everybody get on your nerves, uh, that's a problem. Uh, if you can't get along with nobody. Uh, yeah, that's a problem. Uh, that's a problem. Yeah. I hear you, brother. Yeah, you the problem. You the problem. You the problem. There was a, 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 a listening to this one guy who was saying that he was in a military parade. They they were there in the stands where the uh, the family members were in the stands while the the, the soldiers were marching. About five hundred of them. And one mother stood up and said, look at it, ain't that a shame? Look at that. All those soldiers out of step except my son. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a problem. That's a problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And if, and if everybody wrong all the time and you never wrong, no. uh, uh, that's a problem. You like that. I like that. You the problem. Right. <laughs> 
There's a problem. Uh, Deacon Phil? You know, uh, you know, on, on this walk. Hey, glory. On this walk, you know, uh, I mean, I, I, I always kept a lot of uh, no good friends or whatever you want to call But when you get into the church. Well, you need a couple of them. <laughs> when you, you need a couple of them. When you get into the church and stuff like that, even in the church, as you continue to keep growing in the Lord, your, your circle gets thinner. Yeah. Your people get thin. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and well, you may find yourself walking by yourself, but uh, you'll have to have the confidence that God is with you. Well, I, I'm on I'm on I'm on agree and disagree okay. in this sense. In this sense. Um, I understand what you're saying. That sometimes you gotta walk alone. Uh -huh. You know, and I and I totally agree with that. Yeah. But just because you're in holiness. Don't mean that everybody your enemy. And you shouldn't treat everybody saved or unsaved as your enemy. When Jesus, he was walking on this earth, multitudes followed him. Mm -hmm. huh? Multitudes. He had some people that were against him. They were still following him mm -hmm. huh? to, to bring up an accusation against him. Yeah. Some people were following him genuinely. Yeah. Huh? Some people were following him for the fishes and loaves. You follow me? Right. Yeah. So, so you know, um, I don't want y'all to get the impression that because I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, uh, uh, I'm going to be by myself. No. Uh, that ain't, that, that, that's the devil. That's the devil. You shouldn't be thinking um, uh, because I'm saved and nobody understands me, then I'm all by myself. Right. You know. Right. Sister Mother Louise? It's all right. We I'm all nervous. I think when Deacon Phil says that if, as you walk with the Lord, uh -huh. it's, it, it's not that your circle gets thinner. Mm -hmm. It's that because you are growing, people misunderstand. Oh, yeah, that's true, they, too. They don't, they, sometimes they don't even know how to approach you right. because they see something different in your life. Mm -hmm. So they a lot of times they don't understand. They don't know how to approach you. But at the same time, the, death, the Bible tells you, in other words, to be a base. Yes. So you got to come down and, and learn how to deal with the people yes. that don't know how to deal with you. Yes. So, you know, that's the, that's the, uh, that's the uh, benefit of having a good relationship with God. God will teach you. He would teach you how to go amongst his people. Yes. You know, because we all belong to God. It doesn't yes. matter how much education or how spiritual you are, right. how long you've been in the church. We all belong to God. So you have to learn how to be like Paul. You uh -huh. have to learn how to be on everybody's left. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So yes. that way you 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 don't have a thin and out right. of, of, in your circle. You, no. you you because you know how to deal with people. Absolutely. And that takes time. It's a process. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because people, I'm um, learning that people will shy away from you. Yeah, definitely. I, I've had people to tell me that. Right. So I, I mean, you, you. Sh I see you shining. I'm, I'm afraid to approach you, and I have to let them know. You know, I'm human. Right. You know, I'm it, approaching. It's just that you know, uh, some people are more uh, grown up spiritually mm -hmm. than other people, but you have to learn how to deal with everybody. Absolutely, absolutely. If, if a person had intellectual disabilities, you know, and uh, you were talking to them, the way you would express yourself would be totally different. Right. Uh, if right. if, if uh, I'm talking uh, to Deacon Fields, would be totally different from me talking to right. a two-year-old. Right. You know. So, but I got to be able to relate. Right. I got to be able to relate. Right. Amen. We got to be able to relate. We got to be able to relate. That's why uh, the Lord chose Paul because he knew he knew how to go before kings. Yeah. Uh, he knew how he knew how to to talk to uh, uh, educated folk. Yeah. Uh, and he also knew how to talk to uh, Greeks, yeah. uh, speak their language, yeah. and he also knew how to speak to the Hebrews. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He turned the whole riot upside down just by talking Hebrew. You know, so so that's us. Yeah. We got to become all things to all people. Yeah, right. that's what Paul Amen. Said. Thank you, Lord. And and yeah, 
Sometimes, like Deacon Field said, just roll, go get lonely. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Huh? That's going to happen too. Yeah. Huh? That's going to happen. Yeah. Huh? And that's going to be intentional. Yeah. So God can deal with you. Yeah. Huh? But, but it should not be the commentary for your whole saved life. Yeah. All right? Who had the hand up? Yeah. Okay. You, speak, you spoke of uh, uh, Paul uh, knew different languages. Yes. There are times when, when you approach, when, when you meet God's people, uh, they, they might not be saying you, and they're speaking a different language right. that you don't understand. Right. But at the same time, when you see that they are in need of something, yes. you know, all, all you have to do is give them a hug. Absolutely. I, I experienced <laughs> I was at the Shrine of Hospital when my son was younger. That's the university. He had to have surgery. And this one lady was just walking the hall, and she, had, she literally had a towel. Because her son was in such condition, all she did was cry all day. And she was walking the hall just crying. And it was like nobody noticed her. Uh -huh. she was all alone, she was out from another country. So something told me, I just felt so bad, and I'm like, I can't speak her language. But mm -hmm. So I just went and held her, and I hugged her. Yes. And then the nurse came, and she said, you know, we got an interpreter for her, because we don't even know how to talk, speak her language. And, and she was so uh, she was so pleased with what you did. You know, all you did was gave her a hug. Right. And let her know that you care. Absolutely. So, so there are times when we don't know how to deal with people. If you feel if you feel that they are approachable, because everybody's not approachable, mm -hmm. but you have to have that instinct to yeah, know what you do what you do. Absolutely. Yeah. Hug it. Uh, that's a universal language. Mm -hmm. That's a universal language. Yeah. You know, I, I, I think what I was more or less focusing around is uh, being around people who are trying to pull you in a direction that you know is not spiritually good for you. You know, they may be letting down, ah, oh, come on, man. You know, you see the crowd, they, they start to drink a little bit. They're starting to do oh. I'm saying to oh, myself, yeah. as, you grow, as you grow, God. you may have to say, hey, look, oh, yeah. I ain't been around you. Uh, not in that right, way. I understand. I like they say to myself, you know, and, and that gets lonely. You know, oh, yeah. And you, you start seeing elders and bishops and stuff <laughs> doing stuff they ain't got no business with. You, 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 you got to say, hey, wait, I don't care. You know, uh, he said, sanctify yourself, be set apart. Right. And if I got to stand alone, I'll do it. In that respect, <laughs> I totally agree with that. Because that, that's true. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah that's true. Now, um, and, and what we was talking about, about being uh, adaptable and, a, and accessible, when uh, Paul, he was in a place called Mars Hill, uh -huh. and they had a, uh, an, uh, a scription on a wall uh -huh. to the unknown God. Amen. Paul, because he, he read poetry, uh, he was well understood, uh, well, well rounded. He read poetry, and he knew what that was, and he knew what that meant. So he was able to turn that into relating to them. Yeah. Huh? And he said, let me tell you who this unknown God is, yeah. as, as what some of your poets has written. Yeah. Right. Amen? Yeah. And then he started preaching. Yeah. Huh? Turn souls around. Paul um, said he um, became whatever state that man was in. Right. He became... Right. Amen. So he could win exactly. to Christ. Exactly. That's the, that's the goal. Mm -hmm. That's the goal. And one last thing that he did is popping up in my mind. That uh, remember, uh, some he was around some uh, some some brethren and they uh, wanted to go on a fast. Mm -hmm. And before they went on that fast, they wanted to shave their heads. Uh -huh. You know, and and Paul said, okay, I'll shave my head right. and go on the fast with you. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, he was he did that, as she said, to win them. Right. Amen? To win them. One, one else thing that Paul said that, that you got to be mature enough to receive it. Uh, when he said that uh, people preach this gospel for different reasons. Mm -hmm. Everybody don't preach the gospel for the right reason. No. Amen? But, but, he says, but he said this. He said, so what? Huh? The gospel is preached. That's right. huh? The gospel is preached. If you think about it, people come to church for different reasons. Amen. Some people come to church to get a wife, to get a husband. Huh? Huh? They come 
and see that, oh, ain't no women in here, I'm gone. Ain't no men here, I'm gone. Huh? Some people come to, to get do various things. You know, get a position. Huh? To sing in the choir. Huh? To, 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 because they wife or their husband coming to the church. So they say, uh-uh, you must got a boyfriend up there. You must got a girlfriend up there. So I'm coming. You follow me? Right. Not to hear the word, not to get saved, but for different reasons. Yeah. My point in saying that is, so what? Uh -huh. they, they hear. Right. They may hear something yeah. uh, and, and turn around and get saved. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Uh, yeah. uh, if you think about it, some people probably just get, come to church and get delivered. Right. And then if they get delivered, they go. Right. Uh, yeah. Different reasons. Uh, uh, so we got to broaden our mind. That's what I'm trying to say. Keep your mind open. Uh, don't, don't be black and white. Uh, don't be black and white. Uh, now when it comes down to truth, be black and white. <laughs> but when it comes down to dealing with people, it get complicated. Folk got some complicated stuff on <laughs> If I said I told you my life, you say, man, Pastor, you got some issues. <laughs> you know, we all got issues. It's complicated. But I'm here. <laughs> I'm here in Jesus' name. Amen? So, so deal with me where I'm at. Ain't that how Christ deals with us? He deals with us where we're at. It's, that's about relationship. Huh? I got to have a relationship with you. I got to be able to talk to you. You got to be able to talk to me. Families got to have relationships. Uh, everything ain't cute. Uh, am I right? Get messy sometime, don't it? Uh, yeah, yeah. We were talking about something messy earlier. Uh, get messy. Uh, but, but because it's messy, that don't mean I give up on you. That don't mean I throw in the towel on you. Tell you I ain't going to never speak to you no more. Amen? If, if I... Uh, uh, my mom was around, and I, I only know that I can deal with her for an hour. I go over there and stay that whole hour. And I say, all right, mom, I go. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, I go because you know some people like that. Yeah, you got to take it measures. You know, because you don't want to lose the victory. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? But you don't cut them all. You don't cut them all. Huh? Y'all with me? Hey, y'all don't cut me off. But I'm gonna say this. Well, I ain't gonna say that because uh <laughs> Thank you, Lord. All right, where we at? All right, we have verse number 10. Deacon Fields, would you read for me? Verse 10. Verse 10. Finally, my brethren, uh -huh. be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. All right, now Paul now. Is, is bringing to a close, a summation, you know, of all that he taught in this particular epistle. And he wrote this epistle from Rome, amen, while he was in jail. Mm -hmm. So uh, he was telling them, finally, my brother, this is the conclusion of what I'm, but if, if you're going to do everything that I'm asking you to do in this epistle, you've got to be strong. Amen? you got to be strong where? In the Lord, brother. You got to be strong in the Lord. Uh, you got to be strong in the Lord. In order to be strong in the Lord, you got to build yourself up. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Y'all with me? Got to build yourself up. He says, be strong in the Lord in what? And that means that you've got to be empowered by him. Amen. You got to be empowered by the Lord. He has to be your source. He has to be your strength. He has to be uh, your all in all. Where do you get your help from? The Lord. He empowers me. In him we live. In him we move. And in him we have our being. I don't get it from nowhere else. Uh, no other source uh, is making me strong. No other source should be making you strong. Strong. Got to have singleness of heart with the Lord. Amen? So Paul says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord, be built up in the Lord, and, and, and be empowered by his might. 
His grace is sufficient. Uh, his grace is made strong in your weakness. I'm empowered by him. Amen? Thank you, Lord. All right, read. What does it say? Put on the whole armor of God uh -huh. that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now, note, he tells you now, he says, put on what? The whole armor, the whole armor of God. If we're going to walk this walk, we got to put on the whole armor. Uh, and that whole armor is dealing with, as he's going to break it down, everything that you need for spiritual warfare. Uh, because that's what we're in. Never forget that you're uh, 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 not in spiritual warfare. You're always battling something. You always are fighting something. Amen? Whether you see it or not, it's coming at you. Amen. The devil don't like you. <laughs> Amen? He's coming to kill, steal, and to destroy you. And uh, the only weapon of mass destruction that the devil recognizes is God's armor. Mm -hmm. Amen? Now, you can't fight the devil with your own philosophy. Huh? Your own way of thinking. Jesus said this. He said, I'll show you who a wise man is that built his house upon a what? A rock. Amen? That rock is the truth. Huh? You, the Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall what? Make you free. Make you free. Huh? You've got to know the truth. Amen? Thank you, Lord. You can't, can't be wishy-washy in what you know. Because Eve didn't uh, uh, stabilize herself on the truth, We, the whole world got into trouble. She ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil because she didn't walk in the truth. You follow me? Then she tried to rationalize with the devil. You know the devil got you when you try to rationalize. I didn't really tell no lie. I, I, it wasn't me. I, was, I didn't, you know, what I said was, you know, it wasn't, I wonder if it was a lie. I didn't tell no lie. That wasn't no lie. See, now you're trying to rationalize. Huh? And if you rationalize with the devil, he's going to get you. Because he's a great rationalizationist. Amen? He'll get you. You got to, you got to, when Jesus was in communication with the devil, he just hit him with the word and kept it moving. Huh? You got to hit the devil with the word and keep it moving. Amen? Thank you. And you got to, not just the word, you got to be the truth. Amen? You got to talk truth. You got to know truth. Hallelujah. Amen? Not only know it, but you got to live it. Amen. Amen? Amen? Thank you, Lord. Don't deceive yourself. Uh, now, now, what I'm saying about truth is, is the word of God. Uh, you got to know this word. Amen? You got to know it. You got to quote it. You got to live it. Amen. Uh, and if you don't do that, then you don't have on the whole arm. I just told you what the whole armor was. Uh, knowing the word, uh, quoting the word, and living the word. Y'all should be writing that down. Uh, uh, that's it. You got to know this word. Uh, study to show yourself what? <laughs> Unto God. A workman that what? You need it not to be ashamed doing what? Rightly dividing what? There it is. There that word truth is. Uh, now, 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 you not only do you got to know it, but you also got to quote it. Didn't Jesus say, get thee behind me, Satan? Yeah. Huh? Huh? You got you to be able to quote this word. Amen? That's what backs the devil up. Resist him how? Yep. Steadfast and he'll do what? He'll flee. Then, and to be fully sealed, you got to live it. Amen? You got to live it. If you're not doing all three, is if you don't have on the whole armor. The armor is the word. If you're not doing all three, then then uh, uh, you're not you don't have on the whole armor. You won't be able to stand. You won't be able to resist. You won't be able to withstand. I'm getting ahead of myself. But, but it's all good. Amen? You got to be able to stand 
And you also got to be able to be able to withstand. And those are two different things. Amen? To be able to withstand means when, when the enemy's coming up against you like a flood, huh? and you're withstanding that pressure, when that temptation is trying to take you over, huh? should, I, should I do it or shouldn't I do it? Will God be pleased or won't he be pleased? Uh, when you walk in and, and the, your flesh is rising up and you're resisting the devil uh, and, they, and, they, and all those attacks are coming up against you uh, that's, and you don't fall, that's withstanding. To be able to stand is, is, is though all those attacks are coming up against you, you don't take down. Amen? You got to be able to do that. To be able to stand up for the truth. Huh? That's what the scripture means when it says contending for the faith, huh? which was once delivered to the saints. You got to look at yourself as being a contender. Huh? Thank you, Lord, that, that no matter how many times I get hit, like Rocky, I love that movie, Rocky. Huh? Rocky used to get pummeled, amen, but, but, but he came back. Huh? Told, what's his name? You ain't so bad. <laughs> Clubber Lane. You ain't so bad. Huh? You got to talk to the devil. You ain't so bad. Huh? Thank you, Lord. And be able uh, to withstand and be able to stand. That's what Jesus meant when he said, when the winds came and the storms came and beat upon the house and it didn't fall. Why? Because it was founded upon what? A rock. A rock. So, so if I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this with all sincerity. Uh, like like Paul said, bring your children up in the nurture and admonition. Thank you, Lord. If my, my admonition, my nurturing is, I love you. And my admonition is, if, if you don't read and study God's word, if you lazy, you ain't going to make it. Follow me? If you lazy, you ain't going to make it. Notice, Jesus said this. He said, uh, when he talked about the sower and the seed. Amen? The sower and the seed. Who know that parable? The sower and the seed. Some fell by the wayside. Some fell among thorns. Some fell upon stony ground. Some fell on good ground. Y'all know it. I got me some Bible teachers here. I like it. Amen? What, what, what was the seed? The word, of God. the word of God. And each field represents one's heart. How you receive this word. Amen. If it fall upon the stony ground, uh, the enemy can come and take it uh, from with you because you didn't hide it in your heart. If it fall among the thorns, uh, um, uh, that means that the, 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 that word uh, was choked out. Uh -huh. You allowed the cares of this life to choke that word from you. Uh -huh. Follow me? Yeah. Your word got to fall upon good ground. Yeah. Huh? Good ground. Meaning that you got to cultivate this word in you. Mm -hmm. Amen? You got you to you read it to get it in your heart. You got to be able to quote it, huh? to talk about it. Let it become your conversation. Hallelujah. Amen? That's what he means when the scripture says, when it talks about uh, uh, be like a tree planted by the rivers of water and let not the word depart from your mouth. Meaning, don't stop talking about the word. <laughs> Amen. Don't cease talking about it. Let it be your conversation. Amen. And then you got to live it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You got to live this thing. You follow me? You got to live it. That's how you put on the whole arm. Amen. Y'all with me? I'm trying to make it plain. Yeah. Huh? Thank you, Lord. Make it plain. Make it plain. That's, that's what them old little preachers used to sit up when the preacher passed the preaching. He said, make it plain. Make it plain. Uh, dig your fields. Uh, you know, I've seen a lot of people this winter dressing crazily. I mean, it'd be snowing outside. They'd be wearing slippers. <laughs> yeah, they'd be, I mean, be wearing not coat. Don't wear no coat. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's bad. I mean, uh, uh, they can't even do that. You told them to 
and start putting on stuff that they can't see. You're like, you gotta put on the armor of God. I'm like, sweet, they can't put on stuff that you can see. Well, I'm, I'm, so, I'm glad we're here. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a job. All right, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. That's why you gotta be committed to it. You gotta be committed. And my point in bringing up the parables, uh, uh, the sower and the seed, that, that if you neglect this word, you're going to fall into one of those three categories. If you don't neglect the word, there's only one category you can fall in to be successful. There's three ways to mess up. There's only one way to be right. You follow me? And the one that was right, they hid the word uh, in their heart. Follow me? And, and, then, and they brought forth fruit with what? Patience. They allowed that word to enter into their heart. And they brought forth fruit with patience. The only way you're going to win the battle against the devil is the word of God. The truth. Amen? And it's somebody's opinion. It ain't what Bishop Quinn said. Huh? It's about what the word said. That's what only, that's what matters. Amen? That's what backs up the devil. And the devil know the word. Huh? He came at Jesus with the word. Follow me? Told him, told him, took him up to a high pinnacle, told him to jump. Huh? At least the angels do what? Barely up. Jesus turned around and said, How? Huh? Uh, thou shalt not what? Tempt the Lord thy God. See? He didn't, he, didn't, he didn't try to rationalize with the devil. When you try to rationalize with the devil, he got you. Follow me? Y'all with me? Thank you, Lord. My God. My God. All right. Where we at, D? All right. Read. What's that? Put on the whole arm of God. That you may be able to stand against the wiles of his devil. All right, those wiles means his tricks, yep. his schemes, his tactics. I like it. The devil has tricks. He has schemes. He has tactics. Amen. Thank you, Lord. He got. He got. He got certain moves. You got to know his moves. You follow me. You got to know. You got to know. You got to be able to spot them coming. You follow me. I was. Uh, uh, I was talking to one person. They said, "Well, it's our." Uh, they was they was going out, and basically, they said, "Well, you know, we are not uh, one one to go in, into a place they shouldn't go." And the other one said, "Well, you know, we are not go there. You know, it's gonna happen. You know, it ain't gonna end up good. You know." And the other one kind of persuaded the other one to go. And how do, you, how do you figure they ended up? Didn't end up good at all. Follow me? That's a tactic. That's a trick. Walk like a duck. Quack like a duck. It's a duck. Huh? Don't be ignorant of what? That his devices are his schemes. You follow me? Now, the devil knows what each one of our triggers are. Not that, not that he's so wise himself, but because he has principalities and powers. Amen? Thank you, Lord. He got, he got demonic forces that, that are in rank and file that know about you. In the devil busy. Right? That tells you something about his rank and his file. The devil is not omnipresent. He's not omni omniscient, all-knowing. He's not omnipotent. Huh? But he has a lot of footholds, doesn't he? He has a lot of influence, doesn't he? Because his, his demonic forces, they line up. Just think about if we were to line up the same way with Jesus. One would chase a thousand. Two would chase tens of thousands. Amen? Hallelujah. Be dedicated. My God. My God. All right, let me, let me calm down. <laughs> this thing is real. It's real. 
All right, read the with verse here. Twelve. Uh huh. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, mm -hmm. but against principalities, mm -hmm. against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, when Paul says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, he's just speaking in general. We do fight with people. People do fight with us. But what he's saying is, is that that's not the root cause. The root cause is the spiritual wickedness that is going on. You follow me? That's the root cause. Adam and Eve lost the spiritual battle for all of us. Jesus gained the spiritual battle back so that we can overcome evil and wickedness. You follow? So he says, uh, 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 we wrestle not against what? But against what? Now principalities is the highest form of, of the, the demonic government. All of these things here are, 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 are demonic uh, uh, governments or dominions. Principalities is the highest form of it. Sis? Isn't that Satan is the ruler of this world? Absolutely. Absolutely. And when it say that, it's saying that he's the ruler of this world system. Mm -hmm. Amen? He's the ruler of this world system. That's why we don't depend on this system. We depend on the, the kingdom system. Amen. Amen. That's why you got to know about the kingdom. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Y'all looking at me strange. Yeah, huh? Now we got to know about the kingdom. That's why I say, see first what? The kingdom of God. Uh, and his what? It's right. And then all these other things that you desire shall be what? Added unto the you. kingdom Amen. is his word. Hallelujah. Amen. It comes in you and it dwells in you through the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hey. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, um, um, uh, the, when she said that the devil is the god of this world, it started when? In the garden. When, 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 when what's his face was kicked out. Um, 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 no, that's the son. What's that son name? Uh, Cain. 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 Yeah. Cain. He, when he got kicked out, if you read it, when he got kicked out, that's when government started. Yeah. That, that's when the devil started using the world, this world system. Amen. That's the origin of it. Cain. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Go ahead. Hey, go ahead. What you going to say? How you doing? Right, put a marker on him so folk won't touch him, mess with him. Thank you, Lord. And when he got kicked out, he said, My punishment is too what? Great for me to bear. You don't want to ever leave the presence of God. Amen. And then the devil further used him to set up government system. That's how come the enemy is the God of this world. That's right. Deacon Fields? And, and, and these verses. To explain the system of how they took prayer out of school. Yes. How they uh, it's, it's yes. Like smoke weed. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, 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 gay, gay stuff. And, yep. and all yes. Th 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 this is what yes. is wrestling us. It's like, what is going on? Yes. And, you know, but um, we have to put on the arm. Right. <laughs> Think about what he's saying. Think about what he's saying. Think about what he's saying. They know. Everybody knows. That guns need to be uh, taken away and, and, and uh, uh, you know, those assault rifles and, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. needs to be regulation. But when you talk about it, oh, it's an uproar, it's a fight. Yeah. Huh? They know that, 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 that these things need to happen. But yet, there's a fight. Huh? That fight is the principalities, the powers, you know, to cause people to do that which is evil and not right. You follow? So, uh, Go ahead. So, in other words, you have to choose. Definitely. You Folk can't role. be with the Lord right. and be with Satan too. Absolutely. So that's why I can see why he said put on the whole arm. 
put on the whole arm. That man must be born again because you cannot do those things. You cannot operate with God being a part of the system. Absolutely. Can't. Can't do it. <laughs> Who are you going to serve? As for me and my house, what? And what did Jesus teach? He was deep when he taught it. He said, when they asked him about who uh, should we pay taxes, he said, well, whose picture is on the coin? Caesar. Uh, Caesar. He said, render unto Caesar what Caesar's, get God, was God. Amen. It's a separation. Then, then Paul taught us uh, that the love of money is what? Root of all look at Look at Johnson & Johnson. If you read the story. I ain't talking about the vaccine, uh -huh. but I'm talking about that talcum powder uh -huh. huh, that they gave the ladies. Right. Amen? That the ladies mostly use. I'll put it that way. They knew that in that, in that cave that it had some asbestos in the talc. Wow. They knew that it was go hand in hand. Huh? But the love of money right. will take the risk. Yes. Will take the risk. You follow me? Yeah. Cigarettes. Huh? Proven to cause you cancer. Principalities. Huh? Huh? Proven. They know it. Am I right? Huh? They put the warning sign on it. Huh? Cause cancer. Huh? Principalities. That's just like that Teflon stuff they put in Skiller. That company in Cincinnati, they knew that it caused cancer. Ain't that something? But they covered it up. Covered it up. Did it anyway. Amen. Those are as principalities. That's powers. Amen? That's spiritual wickedness in high places. We're always combating that. Now, I'm going to say something deep to you. Don't you, you uh, accept the fact that this, the fight's always going to be here. You're always going to have wickedness around you. Right. Amen? So don't let it disturb you when it, when, when it come up against you. Know how to fight. Know how to stand. Know how to withstand. Amen. Know that it's a part of the process because Jesus is soon to come. Hey, you know sometimes hey. it's time for us to stop letting the devil bring the fight to us. We got to go. Come to on. We got to go here. We got to take the fight to him. Come on. Uh, that's true. That's what he means when he says, upon this rock, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Meaning this, when he said the gates of hell shall not prevail, it didn't mean that he gonna keep the devil out of the territory. He was meaning that we should go to his territory and kick in his gates. Take territory. Amen, that's what kingdom people do. Amen, they take territory. That's what the Britons did. Now they took territory. Amen. That's what he wants us to do. He wants us to take territory. Amen. Kick his gate in. <laughs> Come on, give God a praise. Man, I'm raising up an army up in here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. But now when you go in the fight, you better have your armor on. Huh? You better have you better be strapped. Amen. You better know how to fight. Go through some boot camp. Amen. Train yourself up. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Y'all with me? God don't want us to be on the sideline. No. Thank you, Lord. He didn't save you to, 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 to keep you uh, from the world. <laughs> Amen? Y'all with me? Hallelujah, my God. Y'all got quiet on me. <laughs> All right. Sister Mother Louise? I was thinking, uh, when she quoted the scripture, did you ever mean that the uh, prince of this world? Yeah. God have a reason for everything that he did. Mm -hmm. Put the devil in position for a reason. Absolutely. But then he he uh gave us a choice. Yes. That we, we have to choose evil or good. All the time. Christ. It is up to us to choose. Yes. We don't have to keep believing, even though it's in the word. We don't have to accept that the devil is the kingdom or, or the press of this world because God sent his son yes. to die on the cross for us. So if we believe that Jesus is the son of God and he died for our sin, we don't have to obey the devil. Not at all. I don't care how much power he has. I don't care Not at all. How, how pressing he is. We don't have to obey him. Nope. Nope. No. You know, Not at all. The Bible tells us to cleave to him is to hide the word in our heart. So we won't have to do that. 
Absolutely. So God said before us too. Yeah. Absolutely. The, the enemy lost the victory. Uh, he lost. He, he lost. He defeated. He defeated. And and um 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 I lost my thought. But what you were saying, what was you last saying? What was you last saying? Uh, we don't have to uh, uh obey in other words, we don't have to obey the devil because no. we have power because of Jesus. Right, and the Holy Ghost. We yeah. su so we yeah. submit ourselves uh, unto the Lord. And you got authority over the devil. That's it. Didn't Jesus say, Behold, I give you power to tread upon serpents, yes. to tread upon scorpions, yes. and over all power of the enemy? Yes. You have that. Yes. Amen. You got to use that. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Walk in that. Yes. Hallelujah. I, 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 made, I brought that statement up because I don't want us to get in our minds that they're in the prince of this world, so we got power. Well, and, and that's why I, I brought it out when he when she quoted it, saying that uh, he, he has power over this world system, this government, uh, this 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 this, this economic system, this world. But he don't have power over the world itself. But what I'm saying is sometimes you know we might misunderstand and don't see it. And yes. Like, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So I was trying to break it down. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. You don't have Absolutely. power over. Uh -uh. No. No. He's limited. Yeah. But and that's why I brought it out was saying that the devil isn't all knowing and all understanding, but his rank and file fall under him and serve him without question. Right. Uh, so if we conversely do that with our Lord in Christ, yeah. um, we would be more powerful right. uh, in that respect as a church, uh, as a kingdom. Follow? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Y'all with me? Yeah. All right. Thank you. One thing I wanted to add was um, I wanted to do this military, basic training. Good. And, <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. I've been here for a while. But anyway, you know, in basic training, they teach you the basics. Mm -hmm. They teach you the things that you need that's going to carry you throughout the whole service. Yeah. You know, they teach you about, uh, uh, you know, who has the most rank. <coughs> you know, yeah. they teach you about all the, the how to fight and train. Right. And then in the church, we have basics. You know, pay your tithes and offerings, uh, prayers, reading your word. You know, there are things that are just basic right. that you need to hold on to while you're uh, fighting the war. Right. You know, and because you can't fight the war until you exercise uh, the basics. You have to at least do the mere basics of what you've been trained and stuff. Once you get out of that type of training of praying and fasting and reading your word, you're going to get weak. Absolutely. Notice the scripture. Notice the scripture. It talks about it in the book of Hebrews. All right? Once you know the basics, Paul taught us. He says, leaving the principles of the doctrine. The principles are the basics. You should not be stuck in first grade and you 30 years old. Huh? They're going to kick you out. <laughs> but, but then now, you should be able then to take the basics and build and go on to maturity, mm -hmm. perfection, mm -hmm. amen? Applying more of God's word to your life amen. to allow him to, to build upon you. Where much is given, much is what? Required. Required. Amen? Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. And, and we've got to allow God to do that with us, but then we can't be stuck in baby self. Amen? Can't take nothing. Mm -hmm. Follow? Mm -hmm. Something come up, I'm, I'm missing in action. Mm -hmm. You follow me? Mm -hmm. That ain't it. No. All right. Well, we're going to cut it off. Oh, that's what I wanted to say, too. Um, I brought Lord brought it back to my mind when I was asking Sister Lee's what she was talking about, about the devil. The Bible says that he comes at us as a uh, yeah, he put up a lot of smoke. Yes, he 
Huh? But who is the lion? Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So, so when the enemy show his head, that ain't the time to panic. That's the time to be like David, get you a sword. No, no, he got him some rocks. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Then he picked up the devil's sword and cut his head off. Amen. Thank you, Lord. All right, we thank God. We're going to stop right here. And uh, this is a good place to stop so I can get into the, the rest of the service. You got to go ahead and turn it off. I think it's stopping. Thank you. We serve.